What's up you guys, Josh here, also known as Harry Tornado. Today is day 21 of the daily vlog. We are almost there. This past weekend, I sold 18 items on eBay. So today's video is gonna be mainly that, showing you guys what I sold this weekend. And I guess we'll see what else we can get into today. I'm coming at you from this little park today. I've never been here before. I was just driving by and I was like, hey, that looks like a cool place to do a video. So that's what I'm gonna do. I sold this TI-84 Plus calculator. This is the one I picked up on Facebook Marketplace for $25. I listed it and it sold within about three days for $69.99 free shipping. I sold these Asics Gel Dirt Dog track running shoes. I got these in a video when I went up to Spartanburg, South Carolina, thrifting somewhere else. And I think I paid like $3 for these, super cheap. They were listed for a while, but they did sell for $28 plus shipping. I sold these women's New Balance running shoes. I got these at Salvation Army for $5.99 and these sold for $19 plus shipping. I picked up this Speedo wetsuit probably seven or eight months ago at Goodwill for $9.99. I did not look up sold comps. I didn't know anything about wetsuits. I just thought it would be worth, you know, maybe 40 or 50 bucks or so, but I was mistaken. This sat in my store for a long, long time. I never got any offers on it. I finally sent out offers to watchers for $21 plus shipping and it sold this past weekend. So not a ton of profit. Probably will know better next time before I pick up another wetsuit. I picked up this Callaway golf hat at Goodwill, I don't know, a couple months ago. I probably paid a dollar for it and it sold for $8 free shipping. This is pretty much what you can expect when it comes to hats. They're not going to be any serious money makers, but they will mostly sell eventually. What is going on? I found this really cool tie-dye Pikachu Pokemon t-shirt at Goodwill probably six months ago. I paid $1.50 for it. And what was interesting about this is that it had a date on the bottom of the shirt that said 2000. So I was like, hey, if I wait until 2020 to list this, then it legally becomes a vintage Pikachu tie-dye shirt. So I thought I could get more money for it. I think I originally listed this for like $49 free shipping and I eventually dropped it down to $29 free shipping just to see if it would move and it sold this past weekend. Full asking price, $29 free shipping. This is one of my Bluetooth speakers that I picked up at Ollie's Retail Arbitrage. I think these were either $14.99 or $15.99 each. I can't remember, but about four of them and my plan was to sell them for 50 bucks free shipping. One guy in the comments said that would never happen. And this is actually the second one that has sold for $50 free shipping. So really good profit margins on a retail arbitrage pickup. It's getting kind of loud over here. There's a the guy weed eating. So hopefully you guys can still hear me. I picked up this vintage Columbia puffer jacket at the Benz a couple months ago. Really sick colorway, like a blue, purple, 80s kind of thing going on. It was like a three-in-one jacket. So you could zip off the puffer later and then it was just like a fleece or something. I don't know. It was listed for a long time and once it made it through this past winter and didn't sell, I was like, oh, it's probably going to not sell until you know, next winter. But I sent on an offer of 30 bucks plus shipping this past weekend and it sold. So I probably paid $3 for it, sold it for 30. So pretty good flip. I was hoping to get a little bit more money for it, but I'm happy to be moving out some of these older clothing items. Next item is this gyro cycling helmet. I think I paid $3.92 for this at Goodwill. I listed it originally for like 35 bucks plus shipping and it never moved. So I dropped the price all the way down to $20 plus shipping and it sold this past weekend. So again, not a ton of profit, but happy to be moving out some of this older stuff. Nothing really exciting about this pair of women's Saucony running shoes. I thought it was a pretty boring colorway if you ask me, but some people like boring. These sold for $23 plus shipping and I paid $6.50 for them at Goodwill. It's just such a loud park, windy and weed eaters. Next item went out is this pair of Echo Men's Spikeless Golf Shoes. I've had these listed for three or four months. I paid $6.50 for these at Goodwill, and these sold to a person in Ireland for $35 plus shipping. I think they paid a total of like $28 shipped. I went uh, through through Pirate Ship, uh, simple export rate on those. Uh, so they were all in, you know, 50, 55 bucks or so. Pretty good flip on a pair of used golf shoes. I picked up this pair of men's rainbow flip flops at the Benz a couple months ago. I paid probably $2 for them and they sold for $17 plus shipping. I picked up this vintage Miami Dolphins hat at Goodwill seven or eight months ago. I've had it listed for a while and this sold to a viewer named Remington for $7 plus shipping. I sold this South Carolina Gamecocks hat to a viewer named Zach down in Charleston, South Carolina. Zach, thanks for your support. Zach paid $6 plus shipping for this hat and I think I paid like 50 cents for it. So again, just happy to be moving out some of this older stuff. One of my recent puzzle runs to Walmart, I picked up two of these office themed jigsaw puzzles. Both of them were pretty small, only 300 pieces each. So I did decide to lot them together in one you know, item on eBay 
and I, I thought they were gonna sell a little bit better than this. I sent out some offers to watchers for like 30, 35 bucks, nobody bit. So I dropped the price down to $25 plus shipping and they did sell. I had about eight, about $9 in each one. So not a ton of money to be made, but you know, when you're facing a situation like we're in right now, you guys, you just gotta take risks sometimes and puzzles are a risk right now. They may sell, they may not. So it's really up to you and your risk tolerance on how much you wanna invest in puzzles. I picked up this Victoria's Secret push-up bra at the Benz probably four or five months ago. Paid about 50 cents for it, and this one sold for $15 plus shipping. Pretty good sale on a used bra. I picked up this Two Meat backpack at Goodwill probably six months ago. I paid $4.92 for it. It was in great condition other than the fact that it had two rips in it. So I didn't want to sell it as is because in that condition, I might have gotten you know 20 or 30 bucks or so. I have a neighbor friend of mine who is a professional seamstress. So I paid her $15, which is what she charged me to fix the, the, the cut on the strap that this bag had and like part of the seam where the zipper uh, went was coming apart. So she fixed both of those made it look brand new for 15 bucks So I had I was all in about $20 on this bag and it sold for $75 plus shipping the buyer was all in like $96 or so the only thing I'm worried about is that this buyer is located in New York City So I know I've heard from a lot of you guys that packages that are being sent to New York City are having a hard time getting there Right now so fingers crossed that this gets there on time and the buyer is happy with their purchase And the last sale of this weekend is this New York Yankees flat bill baseball hat. I've had this listed forever, probably seven or eight months. I paid a dollar for it at Goodwill and it sold for $10 plus shipping. Sales have definitely slowed down a bit for me. Like when all this started, sales kind of tanked for everybody for the first week. But then once things kind of settled out, I think pretty much all resellers had like a huge influx of sales. Uh, and right now, because I'm not listing as much probably, is why my sales are a little bit down. I think, I don't know the exact numbers for this weekend, but I'll throw them up on the screen here. This is the total gross sales amount from this weekend, and our net profit should be about 50% of that. Um, so it was a decent weekend, especially because I haven't listed anything in a while. Uh, but I'm thinking, that, especially now that you know, I'm in South Carolina, South Carolina is opening up retail stores today. Um, so I'm thinking we might have to start listing stuff again, unfortunately. So I was on the way home and I decided to stop at this geocache that's on this side of the town. I went to go check my PO box today. Had a couple pieces of mail in there. I'll open those when I get home. But this one is a level three difficulty um, and it's a nano, so it's really small. And I think it's somewhere on this metal statue thingy. Uh, I mean, this is pretty much exactly where the, okay. This is pretty much exactly where the coordinates are, so I'm, I'm sure it's gotta be on here somewhere. Um, there's no hint, it just says it's a nano attached to a piece of artwork. Uh, there's other metal artwork, like over there and over there, but the exact coordinates is right here. So I'm pretty sure it's on here somewhere. Okay, this one was actually super tough because the nano, it's gonna be like one of those tiny little metal things like was on that street sign, and this sign is like made I mean, this, this artwork is made of tiny little metal things. So I was just kind of feeling around. Where was it? <laughs> I don't remember. It's somewhere. I just found it and now I don't even remember where it was. Okay, it's down at the bottom. It's right here. And there we go, found it. All right, so I signed the log, put it back and we found it. Also, there's a bunch of construction workers over here, like in their trucks on their break, like that guy. And they're all like watching me, wondering what I was doing. But it's fine because that thing is tough to find. So even if they immediately go look at it, like when I leave, they're never gonna find it. And even if they do, they're not gonna know what it is. So a couple months ago, I went to the Goodwill bins and I found one white Vans shoe. Like I just could only find one of them. It was brand new condition, pure white. Uh, I mean, that's, that's what it looked like there. Uh, I looked high and low for the pair for it and I couldn't find it. So I was like, you know, I've heard Rally Roots and other resellers talk about how you can sell one shoe to people that only need one shoe, amputees and, and things like that. So I took a chance on it. I think I paid like a dollar for it. It wasn't a big, big deal. And I've had this shoe listed for probably four months or so. And I have sold this shoe four times. And every time somebody buys it before they actually pay for it, they send me a message asking me to cancel it because they didn't realize it was one shoe. Now, let me show you here. Uh, there's the picture. Okay. One shoe. Also the title, Vans White Canvas Casual Men's 
nine women's 10.5 one shoe all capital letters left foot amputee and i reiterate all these facts in the description i say hey this is one shoe this the photo shows one shoe the title says one shoe all capital letters the title also says left foot amputee and yet still people constantly buy this shoe thinking it's a pair and they never actually pay for it and it happened again today somebody bought it uh I got my hopes up because they had over 2,000 feedback as a buyer. So I was like, maybe they know how to read titles and descriptions and they know what they're getting into. Uh, but no, I got a message from them a couple minutes ago saying, uh, good morning, I must apologize. And then I did not read the entire description and failed to realize it was just one shoe. I would appreciate it very much if you would please cancel the order. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, I'll be happy to cancel the order, but please don't say it's because you didn't read the whole description. It's because you didn't even read the freaking title. The title says one shoe amputee. Personally, I feel like this listing has generated more work than it's worth. I'm only asking $15 plus shipping for the shoe, and this guy sent me an offer of $9 plus shipping, and I accepted it. So the amount of work I'm having to do to cancel orders and, and message people. I know there's other resellers that talk about having success selling only one shoe, but I have not. And it's, like I said, it's just been more trouble than it's worth. So drop a comment on this video and let me know if you have ever sold one single shoe, whether it be on eBay or Poshmark or Mercari. And also let me know if you have ever had to cancel an order for one of your listings of one shoe because people bought it thinking it was a pair. I went to the post office today to check my P.O. box and I did have two postcards and a package. So I'm going to go ahead and read these for you guys. This first one is from the Bay Islands, which is in, it says relaxing in West Bay, Roatan, Bay Islands, Honduras. So uh, this is definitely the first postcard I've gotten from Honduras. Josh, really enjoy the vids. Gives me ideas when I go to the bins. Love beating out my fellow thrifters, some on YouTube. Keep up the good work, Henry S. Almsville, Oregon. I think that says, I think that says Almsville, Henry S. Uh, Henry, thanks for the postcard, man. So even though you're from Oregon, the postcard itself is from Honduras. So uh, I guess I'll put a pin in, in Roatan, Honduras and Oregon. Thanks so much. Next postcard is from Riverside, California. I don't think I had too many from California. This is interesting. I love watching your YouTube channel. Thanks for all the great information. I just gotta ask, what's with the headband? It cracks me up the way you wear it. Julie Sparkman. Julie, uh, why not? And then this package is from Darren's Fun Finds. I've seen them on uh, in my YouTube live chats a lot, so I know they're an active viewer of the channel. Let's see how we go. Here's a thank you card. Ooh, treasure hunt, that's fun. Life is a treasure hunt. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a bandana. A vintage bandana. 18th annual Laughlin River Run, 2000. This is 20 year, is this a 20 year old bandana? From 2000, Dalcon Promotions. This is awesome. All right, let me read the card. There's also a card in here. You're amazing. Darren, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Just wanted to remind you, Josh, thanks for being a constant in this otherwise crazy world. The bandana is one of several I picked up at an estate sale. Enjoy, Darren. Darren, thank you so much. I love getting mail from you guys in general, but also I love getting new bandanas. So this will make it into my rotation in tomorrow's video. Thank you again. Oh, and Darren is from Santa Rosa, California. So I'll put a pin in Santa Rosa. As I said earlier in today's video, I'm probably gonna need to start listing some more stuff if I want my sales to maintain the current velocity that they've had over the last couple weeks. So I made this chart today. And so I'm gonna spin the wheel. And if it lands anywhere over here, I will list my death pile today. But if it lands down here, I'm gonna do trick shots and video games for the rest of the day. So let's give it a spin and see where it lands. Oh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be very close. What is it gonna land on? Oh man, this this is going forever. I'm so nervous. It, okay, it stopped. And it stopped on trick shots and video games. Better luck next time, idiot. Today's trick shot is hitting this ping pong ball back there from the carpet as always and hitting it or trying to hit it inside this roll of toilet paper. Now, as you can see, it is a pretty snug fit. The roll of toilet paper is just about the same diameter as a ping pong ball, so the shot has to be pretty much 99.999% perfect to get it to go in here. I imagine we're gonna hit the roll a lot before it actually goes in, uh, but we'll see what we can do. 
All right, attempt number one. Number three. Eight. Ten. Thirteen. Oh. Fifteen. Nineteen. Oh, man. Twenty-nine. 33, 39, 47, 50, 58, 69, 72, oh man, 77, 93, 97, 100, 106, 109, 111, 114. I hate to do this to you guys, but I think I might have to make this a multi-day trick shot challenge. I've tried 114 times. I'm getting super close, but I have a couple other things I need to get done before Haley gets home from work. So we will extend this challenge to tomorrow. I'll just keep trying this until I make it. I'm going to make it one day. I'll make it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You're the best and I'll catch you guys on the next one.